Hello, and in this video I'm going to be looking at a weird mathematical paradox, sometimes known as Gabriel's Horn, or as I like to call it, the Painter Paradox. This paradox produces something that's both finite and infinite at the same time. Want to know more? Well, stick around. The paradox involves a mathematical function, which produces a geometrical shape. And this shape, whilst having a finite and definitely calculable volume, weirdly, has an infinite surface area. In other words, this shape could hold a finite volume of paint, but the paint contained within would not be enough to paint the inside of the shape, because the surface area of that shape is infinite and would therefore require an infinite amount of paint. So let's now look at this mathematical function which produces all of this, and strangely it's a very simple equation. The equation is y equals 1 divided by x. Now this only works if the value of x is greater than or equal to 1. So let's draw a graph of this equation. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to x divided by 1, which is 1 divided by 1, which gives us 1. Moving along, when x is equal to 2, then y is 1 divided by 2, or a half. And so this is plotted here. Again, moving further, when x is 3, y is a third. When x is 4, y is a quarter, and so on. If we then plot this curve, as the values of x get bigger and bigger and bigger, the values of y get smaller and smaller and smaller, but importantly, never ever reach zero. The value of y will become minuscule, but it will never ever become zero. If I now take this line that we've drawn and rotate it around the x-axis, it produces a three-dimensional shape. And if I plotted the line for values of x up to infinity, this tail here will be infinitely long. The shape here is given the name of Gabriel's horn, after the horn used by the archangel of the same name. The key to this shape is the fact that the line never ever reaches zero. One divided by a million is a very small number, but it's not quite zero. One divided by a trillion is a very, very small number, but it isn't quite zero, and so on. If this line ever touched zero on the x-axis, then when I rotated it around the x-axis, it would have a finite surface area. But because that line never ever touches zero, the tail of this shape, or the pointy bit of the horn, gets thinner and thinner and thinner, but never becomes nothing. Forever. The effect of this is to give us a shape with an infinite surface area. If this was really a horn, then you'd be unable to blow it anyway. As even travelling at the speed of light, it would take you an infinite amount of time to reach the blowy end in order to blow it. If, however, you were an omnipotent super being, would you still be able to get to the blowy end in order to blow it? Whoa, that's a paradox within a paradox. That's like a paradox squared. Anyway, back from the realms of philosophy. There is some maths that I could show you that would prove that this has got an infinite surface area. But I won't. Well, actually, I will, but I'll just do it briefly. And so for those of you who are interested in the maths, here it comes now. So now on to the volume of this object. To calculate this, we can look at this object as a series of cylinders, and then add up the volumes of all of the cylinders. And essentially, that's what we're doing when we do an integration, which we're going to perform to work this out. Again, there's some relatively clever maths here, which I will show you for those of you who are interested. The object then has a volume of pi, or in other words, 3.14, etc. cubic units of volume. If the units along the x-axis were centimetres, then the volume would be 3.14 centimetres cubed. If they were inches, it would be 3.14 cubic inches. If it's parsecs, then the volume is 3.14 cubic parsecs. The point is, though, that it has a finite volume. So here comes a strange bit, and the reason that it's called the painter paradox. This shape could hold a finite volume of paint, in fact 3.14 cubic units of paint, but that amount of paint would not be enough to paint its internal surface, which we've already seen is infinite and therefore would require an infinite amount of paint. However, we know instinctively that we can paint the inside of any object by simply filling it with paint and then tipping out the excess. And hey presto, the inside's painted. So does this paradox have an explanation? Well, yes, actually it does. And there's a couple of ways to think about this. 
Firstly, let's assume that this object is real and that I filled it up with actual real paint. Paint is made from molecules and as the object got thinner and thinner and thinner, eventually it will become narrower than a paint molecule and so beyond that point it will be impossible to paint any further. Hence we could therefore quite easily paint the inside. Alternatively, we could assume that this is mathematical paint with zero thickness. And again, you could quite easily coat the inside with paint as long as the paint needed got thin enough quick enough. And this is in the same way as one of Zeno's paradoxes. In this paradox, he suggested that Atalanta wanted to walk to the end of a path. In order to do that, she must walk halfway there. In order to do that, she must walk a quarter of the way there. And in order to do that, she must walk an eighth of the way there, and so on. This means that Atalanta must perform an infinite number of tasks, which of course she can never do. When you realise, however, that the vast majority of all of these tasks that she must complete can be completed simply by taking the first step, then sums to infinity become a little less absurd. Just before we go though, if you could get to the blowy end of the horn to blow it, it would still never make any sound as it would take an infinite amount of time for the breath to make it from that end to the end that makes a noise. Well hopefully I've given you something to ponder until the next video, but for the time being, thank you for watching. <laughs>